All right. I am really excited to introduce Alexandre again. He spoke in my track last year and did a bang up job. Last year was his first time speaking at any kind of big conference at all. Since then, he's gone on quite the world tour. He went to China, he, 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 he went to Hack in the Box, he spoke in Europe, and now he's back here to speak again. Let's give Alexandre a big round of applause. Have a good time, my friend. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hello, guys. Good afternoon. Let's talk about .NET Mob Reversing. Uh, it's a pretty easy uh, talk, I think so. Uh, I'm a uh, security research. Uh, here is our agenda about uh, about my presentation. Here uh, you have my last presentations on confidence of Defcon China, Hack in the Box Amsterdam, and Defcon last year. I recommend you take some time to read it. Uh, in the last line, uh, you see my tool, my personal. Create tool, uh, malware view tool. Uh, if you have some free time, uh, you you can test it. And let's start. Uh, there are lots of people here. Honestly, once again, I was expecting ten or twelve people <laughs> uh, because most malware analysts uh, don't like uh, .NET malware. So, uh, Basically, my analysis uh, while uh, analyzing .NET malwares are concerned to unpack uh, a binder from memory or uh, find the, in, the encryption routine in a .NET malware or even to uh, the decrypt resources embedded in, in this kind of malware. But according to my experience, dot .NET uh, .NET malware uh, can be so challenging because uh, sometimes advanced uh, authors, uh, advanced malware authors, try to modify uh, the .NET malware, the application, directly in the intermediate language, and uh, I've been. Uh, I, I've been checking and analyzing some mirrors in .NET, uh, which try to attack the .NET runtime. So uh, it's recommended to learn a bit more uh, on intermediate language and uh, some uh, information about the metadata in .NET runtime. Uh, most of the time, uh, we find uh, .NET malwares uh, around the world, and we have uh, usually a uh, native code, uh, sorry, a .NET uh, uh, managed code loading a, a native code on the memory. D this is the common scenario, but sometimes things can be worse. Uh, Sometimes things can be a bit more complicated. You see, this is a real case uh, that I faced uh, some month ago. The suspect uh, received an email, click on the link, drop uh, uh, a first dropper. This dropper uh, fetch a uh, first payload on the internet. This payload is composed by two pieces. One piece is a, a native code. The other piece is an encrypt managed code. This uh, first piece in native language, in native code, is injected in, into another process, in a remote process. Once this code is injected, uh, this code load the first managed code, the decrypt and load. This managed code fetch a second stage from the internet. The second stage is the real payload and the infection starts. So things, uh, things can be harder uh, than, than, uh, than usual case. And I try to 
showing in pictures here. Uh, I don't need to show you again how to make injection. Injection is so easy. I tried to show you here in these slides. This slide is a kind of refresh about injections. Uh, I, I won't explain it because it's pretty easy. But as I mentioned, things can be different. For example, I told you that usually I have a, a managed code loading a native code uh, on the, uh, into the memory. But sometimes, sometimes things are the inverse. I have a native code loading a managed code into the memory. In this case, for example, I have, I use the CLR create instance to get an interface named iCLR meta host. From this interface, I use the get runtime to get another interface named iCLR runtime info. From this interface, I use a new method named get interface to load the runtime. Afterward, afterwards, I use the execute application to activate the domain. I start the runtime using the start method. And finally, I use the executing the full application domain to start the real application, the real infection, the real payload. As you know, a .NET framework is composed by a runtime, CLR, and some libraries. Uh, more authors uh, can write uh, malwares using different languages uh, such as uh, C Sharp, F Sharp, uh, VB.NET, and so on. Uh, basically, uh, these source codes are compiled into a common language in, uh, infrastructure and finally run by the CLR. Uh, we, we have several excellent tools to analyze .NET um, Mirrors. I try to list some of them here. I use them uh, daily in my daily job. Personally, I also use some uh, additional tools that I try to show you here in red. Uh, these are great tools to analyze .NET malwares and reverse some of them. And uh, of course, uh, you must know that most .NET, most .NET malwares uh, use uh, some kind of packers or cryptors. So we, I, I, I tried to show you some of them here. And uh, pay attention that the last one, VM Protect 3.40, uh, was released, uh, I, I believe, one or uh, two weeks ago. And now uh, it includes uh, .NET obfuscation. When you are uh, working uh, with .NET malwares, uh, you should uh, or you must try to remember that most of them uh, are using obfuscators, and obfuscators can obfuscate, uh, obfuscating the control flow. These obfuscators try to rename methods, attributes, classes, and so on. Some of them uh, encode all of the strings, of course. Uh, try to encode and uh, obfuscate the cross-reference. You know, it's so complicated to analyze this kind of uh, code uh, while you're using uh, any kind of obfuscators. Uh, so it's very important that you know about that. When, uh, when I'm analyzing a .NET Maori, usually, usually I see the same functions load the payload. In this case, I try to show it in green here. Uh, assembly.load, assembly.load file, and method info.invoke. It's almost, almost, almost the same things. Uh, uh, it, 
most time the, uh, we see a kind of uh, reflection approach. And uh, when you see uh, a reflection approach, you, you see a sequence similar to that. Uh, I'm using load or load file, followed by get type, get method, and invoke the method. So reflection is, uh, is so used uh, during uh, dot not, dot .NET malwares, so uh, it's a very common approach. Another approach, another poss possible approach is using get assembly name plus get type, get method, invoke again. As most malwares uh, have been using resources or uh, these dot .NET malwares try to hide uh, some DL or uh, payload into resources, you see uh, sequences like this one in pink, uh, find resource, size of resources, and so on. Sometimes uh, you see uh, other sequences like this one in orange, uh, when uh, uh, malicious uh, .NET assembly uh, uh, is trying to load some external DLL. All of, all of these approaches are based on uh, trying to load something in runtime to evade your static analysis. Here I I'm showing you a first very basic malware. I uh, open in DNSPy. We have the entry point uh, there in green. I click on the entry point. I find a class named the Pineable Buffer Cache Event Source. Inside this class, I see the main function. In, and at the bottom, I see our potential malicious function named target invocation exception. Following this function, I see that this, this very special function is trying to load uh, an assembly. And uh, this function are using a URL to load this assembly, but in this case, the web link comes from several attributes. For example, I took one, the first one, uh, and I checked that this attribute is being set by getting a new assembly using get execute assembly here at bottom. This function is trying to read a resource. This resource is encrypted and when you decrypt the resource, you see a uh, PE P executable. So uh, each, uh, each of these uh, variables are, are related to a resource that represent a possible or potential malicious native code. Here uh, I'm showing the same code, but uh, using intermediate language ASM. It's similar. You see the main function, the end point. You see at right our function, our malicious function. We have a token. Uh, token is that number zero six, and this talk uh, works uh, a kind of index inside a metadata table named member reference table there. And when, uh, when I try to uh, follow it, I find uh, our function here at bottom and more details are expanded. As you see, implementation flex are IL, intermediate language, and manage because I'm handling a managed code. 
This is a, this is a manifest. A manifest in this case is a file that wrap up everything. In this case, you can see the assembly name, you can see several managed resources related to uh, embedded resources, and at the bottom, you can see further information about this matter. As I mentioned before, this point, uh, this malware is using reflection to load malicious contents at runtime. So you can see here several calls to get execute assembly methods in several points in this intermediate language code. Sometimes you you are facing a um, bit harder uh, .NET malware. Uh, and this malware uh, brings some uh, encrypted resources, so you can use DNSPy or other uh, tool, drop this resource, decrypt it, and using Reflexo, Reflexo is a kind of plugin. You can add the original code and load the resource, the quip resource to analyze the malware. In this case, you must to remove, you must remove the old references because the old references are reference uh, the quip resource. So in this case, you drop the resource, decrypt, edit the original .NET malware, load it again, and that's it. You can analyze your .NET malware uh, using this, uh, this technique. Of course, it's always recommended to know a bit more uh, intermediate language and, of course, metadata. I, I, I think that about 90% of case .NET malwares or .NET malware authors trying to insert some malicious code in or initializers or finalizers. In this case, for example, usually I try to check uh, every uh, class constructor to find or a uh, unpacker or decryptor or any kind of uh, hooking code. It's very usual, for example, in, in the last few weeks, I've been seeing uh, several .NET malware trying to compromise the JIT. Uh, in this case, this, uh, these special malware, these special advanced malware trying to uh, hook this function, compiler, uh, Sorry, compile methods uh, to compromise the JIT. In this case, when the JIT uh, generates the native code, uh, this, this special malware can hide or uh, encrypt user code in runtime. For, for example, in this case, I try to see the class constructor. There, usually, I found uh, I find some uh, some hooking code. This hooking code try to compromise the compile method, and by uh, using this trick, uh, the malware can or hide or encrypt the user code. It's a very clever technique. There are other uh, .NET uh, details here. Most .NET malware bring some very important uh, metadata. So metadata basically are information about classes, attributes, members. Usually, uh, usually you uh, get very valuable in information from metadata. Uh, a .NET application, as you see, is composed by a managed executable and a managed code. 
it's not uh, so hard to analyze this kind of code, but you need to uh, have some uh, uh, some guidelines to do that. For example, a managed code is composed by AP header, of course, CLR header, metadata, and intermediate language. In this case, I have the compiler here, uh, I, I have the managed uh, models, I have the resource files that uh, are compiled to a final version uh, composed by a manifest, a managed models, and a resource file. Uh, and a resource file. In using pictures, you see that uh, a .NET header is composed by P header, CLR header, CLR data, and native code. And at the right side, you can see the same picture, but uh, in a detailed view. Metadata is very important because there uh, I can find very uh, valuable things and information. Metadata in this case is composed by definition tables, reference tables, and manifest table. Uh, there are several tables inside of these, uh, these classes. And you should remember that all the .NET uh, malware infection try to use one of these tricks, or code manipulation inside the class constructor, or finalizer, uh, try to load some a managing function, a, a function, or use a uh, con component. So uh, the tricks are the same, always the same. Here is a second case, a bit more complicated case. This is a real .NET malware. I'm, I'm showing here the intermediate language and the metadata information. As you see, you see the name, type def reference table. You see the method name, in this case man, and the flags. In this case, I'm, I'm using the IODES uh, to show this screen. As you see, the real managed code is so small, less than 5%. Metadata is so important because, as I told you, describes some information about members, attributes, properties, classes, and so on. And this metadata uh, is organized uh, by using a kind of relational database. And it's so interesting because, you see, I have a table, uh, one, two, three, four, five slots. Each slot is dedicated to a class, and each slot tells me which methods belong to this class at right. Uh, these metadata are organized in named strings and classified in metadata, in metadata heaps and metadata tables. Metadata, uh, metadata heaps is so easy because there or uh, our only concern is about strings. So a string heap is more important for us. And inside these uh, six named streams, we have uh, hash US uh, is related to user strings, and hash dash is a kind of uncompressed metadata stream. So I, I believe that uh, these uh, two ones are the most important. When I talk about uh, metadata table, uh, we have several tables. It is almost impossible to remember everyone, every table. You see, I list the, all the tables here, and uh, things here works using a token. A token is a kind of structure composed by four bytes. The first byte determines the table. And the remaining three bytes tell us the row inside this table. 
Here I show you uh, some statistical information about metadata. And at bottom, I show some user strings that I commented about the name strings. Intermediate language in .NET is a kind of uh, ASM language based on stack. So you see several instructions uh, load something onto a stack or pop something from stack. F from stack. You see uh, a very usual application or tool na uh, named engine. Engine is a executable to compile to compile a uh, intermediate language code into a native code. It's so easy to do that. But in the last three years, I've seen several hours trying to attack the dot, the dot net framework. In this case, uh, this kind of uh, infection are a bit more complicated. We have several, uh, we, we have several uh, kinds of dot .NET members, but assemblies are classified in private assemblies and shared assemblies, of course. Uh, you should remember that most malware samples uh, try to hide some malicious content in resources, hide by encrypting or obfuscate something. Uh, some .NET malware try to download uh, an external assembly from somewhere, and other uh, .NET malware are based on multi-file assemblies. In this case, it's a bit more complicated because these authors try to compose the .NET assembly in, uh, and split over multiple files uh, to evade the defenses. It's so easy to generate a multi-file.net malware. For example, I show you here a step by step. In this case, it's so easy. Uh, I compile, for example, a hooking.cs model. I compile an injection.cs. And using uh, a, a main program named defcon.cs, I generate a library named uh, malwarelib here. It's so easy to do that. Of course, this operation touched several metadata tables, uh, but it, it, it's normal. Here, uh, we have a real manifest about our second malware. You see some native models being loaded at bottom, some external reference to assemblies, and at this case, in, sorry, in this case, our, uh, our assembly is a strong assembly because uh, it, uh, it is a, a digital, uh, it's signed by a private uh, key from somewhere. The second screen here, you see the driver, uh, the assembly name, you see several custom attributes, you see that uh, the signature is using SAG, SAJ1 algorithm. You see several managed resources being used. And uh, at the bottom, you see that the, uh, the real name of this malware is Microtech Realtech Driver .z. I show you here how to compile a final executable in C sharp, it's pretty easy. If you have a key pair, you can sign uh, this assembly by using this procedure here at the bottom. After signing this .NET assembly, you can see the public key there in red. 
during some infections, uh, I've seen uh, native native uh, uh, codes trying to copy a uh, .NET assembly to GAC. GAC is global means global assembly cache. In this case, the author uh, was trying to execute the native code, copy the manager code to GAC, because other pieces of this malware uh, would, we, uh, would use uh, the, this shared assembly in the GAC to continue the infection. It's a kind of second stage. It's pretty easy to copy to that uh, because you can use GAC YouTube there in Orange or you can use the MIC package to do that. Of course, uh, to copy anything to GAC, you need to have a key pair to sign your .NET assembly. If you don't have one, you can use the only the public key and try to uh, delay signing. In, in this case, you will uh, sign the .NET assembly only use the public key. Ch uh, to do that, you can follow this procedure. You can add some resources by using slash resource. You can uh, add some references by using slash references. It's pretty easy. Of course, uh, I don't have enough time here to show you uh, how to, uh, uh, to explain every single instruction in intermediate language. So I left some, some slides here showing it important instruction in intermediate, in intermediate language. Uh, I don't have enough time to do that, unfortunately. And here I show you a real, real malware. Uh, it's the same malware, so I try to comment several lines. Of course, you must know about C Sharp uh, to understand the, this code. Uh, here, we don't have anything different from our C Sharp code, but uh, the names and, and the keywords are a bit different. You have a public uh, class, you have a private class, you have a silly class, you have a constructor here, a CTOR, you have some private fields, we have uh, some stack reservation there, max stack, you have several operations load things to stack and pop th uh, things from stack. You have a custom, a custom instance here at bottom. You have private class, you have a uh, uh, invocation of a native code in, in the middle here. You see uh, pinvoke implementation here, trying to call uh, a manage code. You have here at bottom uh, an uh, local variable being initialized with zeros. We have a try a try catch uh, structure, so it's so similar to a uh, C sharp code. I try to comment several lines here uh, to help you later. You have, for example, here, <laughs> or or .NET malware are interested in get or uh, keystrokes. You see, uh, uh, in this case, malware is trying to hook uh, some uh, keyboard operations. Uh, as you see, uh, the .NET malware is trying to hook the key down event and key up event. So. Uh, is a kind of keylogger. At bottom here, we have uh, some event declaration. Uh, in, in this case, our .NET malware is trying to subscribe some functions uh, on, ch on this event. Uh, at bottom, key down, at up, uh, key, uh, key up, 
And finally, uh, our dot .NET malware using aggregate uh, uh, to invoke this event. So easy to do that. Several uh, constructors being called here. Oh, finally, I found the decryption function. This function is re responsible for decrypting several strings from this malware. As you see, I try to comment line by line, or the most important line here. Uh, you can you can try to monitor all DLLs load uh, from the GAC by using fuzz lock or even process monitor. But uh, as I told you, uh, some advanced malware try to compromise the the .NET framework. Uh, try to insert some hookings, and even trying to compromise the JIT. So it's, uh, uh, this kind of malware are more dangerous. Uh, here at, at bottom, I show you the complete procedure. For example, I can copy a DLL from GAC, modify, uh, recompile uh, to the native code, and copy back again to the GAC. It's so, it's so easy, pretty easy to do that. Of course, uh, nothing is so simple to do that. I need to, I, I need to uh, have a sign assembly. And as I don't have the private uh, key from the Microsoft, it's so complicated to do that. Uh, other approach, it would be to uh, resign all the .NET framework. It's so hard to do that. I can try to uh, copy the, the modified DLL uh, to GAC, but if uh, some applications or services uh, are using this uh, DLL, it's not possible. I can try to force a reboot to make this copy. And even that I get it to do that, I need to force uh, my current applications using this modified DLL. So in this case, I need to uninstall and remove the native uh, code from the native directory. Kismet uh, show a very uh, interesting way uh, to do that. Uh, Kismet uh, 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 show a very nice trick by by copying by dropping assembly to this path tasks. Uh, dot .dll to force uh, applications using my modified DLL. I can try to, for example, I have, uh, I have a register uh, composed by two entries. One entry uh, is pointed to uh, the assembly code. The other entry is pointed to the native code. In this case, I try to change the second entry to, uh, to point to my modified DLL is a, another approach here. Some, uh, some .NET malware try to co compromise services, try to uh, introduce some hooking in JIT. Some, DLL, uh, some .NET DLL try to load uh, external assemblies. So there are several tricks. Of course, uh, I've been using Windebag to analyze uh, this kind of .NET malware uh, using uh, an extension like SLSX. And uh, here, I show you a complete approach. For example, here, here I load the, the extension SOS, uh, uh, SOS dot DLL. I found the native entry point, the, 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 uh, the managed entry point. I disassembled the entry point. I found the PE entry point there by using dump bin. Uh, I try to display the pointer, and finally, I find uh, the core easy man uh, function by disassembling. I can dump the domain. In this case, 
uh, I see the system domain, I see the shared domain, I see our domain that uh, from our malware. I see several calls to external assemblies, visual basic, sitting the DLLs, firms, and so on. I list uh, some menus exception. I can try to switch uh, the thread, for example. In this case, I switched to thread zero. I dumped the managed stack trace here. I found our .NET m uh, malware at bottom. I list some managed threads by using uh, bank threads here. As you see, you can see that uh, threads uh, threads 0, 2, 5, 10, and 14 are managed threads. All of them are managed by garbage call collector. I list the native, the native uh, stack at bottom using key N. I pick up uh, an entry there. I check that if this address belongs to the JIT code, yes, in this case belongs. I pick up the method descriptor reference. I disassemble it, so we have the disassembly uh, uh, function here. I check the menu stack again. I pick up uh, object address. I check it again uh, uh, if this address belongs to the JIT. Yes, again, I dump the method descriptor information here. I pick up the class reference at top. I dump the e class structure information. I found the, I found that this specific class has Six methods, 28 instance fields, and five static fields. I can check one of these fields, for example, in this case, a value type field, by using dump VC. I found a hash table class composed by several, uh, several fields here at right. I dump the, the math table information. I dump the math table information again, but a uh, detailed output. As you see, several uh, methods, some of them pre-digit, pre-compiled. I dump the information about uh, a specific model. I found the assembly reference. I dump the assembly uh, information. I found the parent domain information. I dump the domain information at bottom. It's pretty easy to do that. Well, of course, here, here is a bit more complicated. Uh, finally, I start again. I, I found the method table structure and uh, e structure here. I found some interesting uh, classes, uh, possible malicious classes possible malicious classes. I, I take one, test print dot client. I dump some information from this class. As you see, there are several methods there. I pick up one. I dump the class is, and it's very interesting because there I I found some, uh, some uh, fields in English, Portuguese, and German language. I, I took the German one to check the information. As you see, uh, this part uh, wasn't executed by JIT because at bottom is JIT the no. So I try to put a breakpoint to a future execution. I dump it again all, all of the stack objects. I saw a, a, a function using a 
an array. I dumped this array. This array is composed by one element that in this case is a structure, as you see at the bottom. I dumped, okay, that's, that, that's the same slide. I checked the heap information. I check any kind of references to these objects by using GC root. References from, uh, references from the stack and from the handle tables. I check the finalized query to find something interesting. I check the pine handle because some malwares uh, cause strong heap fragmentation. I check again, a key, again, uh, some, pro some problems with locks and deadlocks. Locks and dead deadlocks. I try to find a string inside the heap, the manager heap. Uh, at the bottom, I dump the, the malware from memory. And finally, finally, I check the thread environment block. I dumped some strings from there. I found some nice strings at the bottom. Uh, I dumped all of the heap. I found, I found uh, some, I, I, I found some uh, classes. I took one keyboard hook and so nice. I dumped methods from this class. There are several methods. I took the last one, tried to disassemble it in, in, intermediate, in intermediate language, Try to dump all strings from the memory related to this uh, method, and it's nice. I found several URLs related to banks. So this is a kind of Trojan banker. Uh, I, I'm leaving some breakpoints for, for you here. These are, are very nice breakpoints to test, to gather some additional information. And I test the, the URL uh, in virus total by using Malwareview. I can see that it's a malicious site and I test the domain and I found several related things, several malicious things uh, associated to this do domain. It was a very uh, long presentation, I know about that. If you want, I can, uh, I can explain details for you. Uh, thank, thank you so much to the DEFCOM staff as usual for you uh, who reserved some time and have a nice day, thank you.